Stress is an inevitable part of life. Whether one lives in the jungles of the Amazon or in Trump's White House, they will encounter stress at some point in their life. Now the key is we all respond to stress differently. To some, stress is just another bump on the road of life. But to others, especially young children, it's a dynamic force that can forever alter the course of their lives. Research has shown that children who are chronically exposed to stress are more likely to develop mental illness or self-destructive behaviors later on in life. Now, the million dollar question is, how does stress achieve this? And that's where we come in. There are many speculations about this question, but we hypothesize that since stress affects mental health and behavior, it surely must be acting on the brain. And I'll explain. Now, the brain comprises a complex network of cells called neurons, which communicate through chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. Now, these neurons also have uh, receptors, and you can think of these as gateways to the cell. They recognize, receive, and they relay a message from cell to cell. Now, let's think back to the childhood game of telephone, where a message was passed along a chain from child to child. As you might recall, the entire thrill of this game was to see how quickly and how badly a message would get broken. Now, the more excited or silent a child was, the more likely they were to be the breaking point in this message. Now, you can also think of neurons as playing the game of telephone, since they do pass a message along a chain. And you can also think of chronic stress as that negative energy that either excites or silences the receptor message, making receptors one place where this message can get broken. Unfortunately, though, a broken message in the brain is the difference between mental health and illness. So to explore this, we studied two groups of rats, one that was exposed to chronic stress in early life and the other that wasn't. And we also looked at two receptors in regards to this, the NMDA receptor and the Turek B receptor, which are implicated in schizophrenia and depression. And very interestingly, we found that there were differences between the stressed and the non-stressed animals. And even more interestingly, the changes observed in the male brain suggest that it is more susceptible to the impact of early life stress, respective to the female brain that was somehow more resilient. Now, I must say I am not surprised, but I'm also not biased. And we're currently working to understand these gender differences in response to stress. Every child longs to feel safe, accepted, and loved. But the sad reality for many is bullying, abuse, and neglect. Unfortunately, we can't protect every child from stress, but what we can do is understand how stress affects their brain so better treatments can be offered to those who need it. Thanks to this research, a tough start does not have to mean a tough life. Thank you.